Uh, the biggest news in college football that's happened this past week is, it has to be, Texas A&M freshman quarterback Kyler Murray has elected a transfer and will not play for the Aggies in the bowl game. The team confirmed Thursday. It is uh, He's been released from the scholarship from A&M. He can transfer to any school as long as it's not an SEC team or on the Texas A&M schedule for the next four years. Uh, they just want to really make sure that in case he has a red shirt or whatever happens that he is not going to be because obviously his freshman year is already done. So he has three years of eligibility, but and wants to play it safe. Uh, Murray, who missed practice Wednesday uh, for what the team called, quote, personal reasons, tweeted about his decision Thursday night saying, you know, thank you, everybody, for the support. Um, for all the great friends that I met, I'm out. Basic, that's it. Last week, we, uh, we talked about Kyle Allen, a 14-game starter, another top-ranked quarterback, now also leaving Texas A&M. He was the first to go. So you were thinking, all right, well, it, it is a loss, but, you know, A&M, they have Kyler Murray. Obviously, the, the way the season played out, they really were wanting Kyler Murray to take that lead. And you're thinking for 2016, it's all Kyler Murray now. It's all on him. Then a week goes by, and now you're out of both. Both of them are now gone. Sources said that the universe, or that there was uncertainty between the Texas A&M offense and the future of the offensive coaching staff. Trust issues between the quarterbacks and the coaches, and how the quarterbacks were utilized among the team uh, were among the team's concerns that led to both Murray and Allen's transfers. Now, rightfully so, the Aggies have had their worst offensive season statistically since Kevin Sumlin took over in 2012 ranking in the bottom half of all offensive categories. You know, last year, defense was terrible. Offense was pretty solid. You know, it was up there. It was a Kevin Sumlin offense. It was doing what it had to do, but defense was just garbage. You bring in uh, Chavis from LSU. He does his job. Defense is there. It's great, solid defense. And then you have a terrible offense. It's just not working for A&M. Uh, now, no decisions have been made regarding the future of offensive coordinator Jake Spevidal, who was a primary caller for both Allen and Murray, um, and also you know big recruiter for them, or any of the offensive coaches. Someone said Wednesday that uh, he indicated that no decisions will be made until after the Aggies game against uh, Louisville in the uh, Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl on December 30th. But you got to think, what is truly happening with a and what, what's happening inside because there's you don't just lose two premier recruited quarterbacks like that there has to be some decision into something bigger and we're obviously not knowing uh, Murray played in eight games this season he started three completing 72 of 121 passes for 686 yards and five touchdowns and five picks uh, while adding 335 yards on the ground and a touchdown uh, Murray's transfer also, of course, fe- affects their baseball team, which we're <laughs> really hoping to keep Allen because he was uh, regarded as one of the baseball prospects uh, who pulled out his uh, name out of the MLB draft in May to play for uh, A&M. So with that, where is Murray going to go? There's multiple you know, things, mo- you know, ideas of what he could do. We already know Kyle Allen has already talked to uh, Houston head coach Todd Herman and another offensive coach at Houston to, to, dis- to discuss possible transfers. So not saying it's a favorite, but pretty good shot. You're Greg Ward. He's a junior this year. He'll be uh, a senior next year. So Kyle Allen comes in next year. He red shirts that year and well, he's forced to sit out anyways, sits out that year. And then you have Kyle Allen for two more years at Houston starting 2018-2019, pretty good shot. Now, whether whether Todd Herman stays for another three years, who knows, he obviously signed a five-year contract, but we've seen coaches come and go very quickly with uh, bigger deals. So the question is with Kyler Murray is, will he be released from his national letter of intent? If not, he loses a year of eligibility. Now, this is how it goes. The national letter of intent, rule states that if a player is not released from his uh, NLI and transfers before completing an academic year, which is two semesters or three quarters, the player loses a year, meaning Murray, after sitting out a season next year, 
if he transfers to an FBS school, he would have only two years to play, not three. Could be a huge decision for Murray and what happens. Um, now, again, back to Murray is where he will go. There's there's options where he could just go to some school, play baseball, and, and, and just get ready to get drafted and go from there, forget football. Which would be kind of crazy given what he did in high school and being you know one of the best players in high in Texas high school football history, but there's also a little bit of rumors that remember in, if you remember in his recruiting, pretty sold on A and M, but at the last minute, he took a trip to Austin, Texas to go see the Longhorns, see what they're about. Obviously, a lot of Aggies were upset about that, but you know obviously they still got their man. Now that they don't, there's a lot of rumors. That Murray might be looking at Texas. You even had multiple Texas players without naming Murray, but shortly after finding out Murray was going to transfer, say, come on over. Even Gerard Hurd, who's 